So blood vessels, both arteries and, and veins, are going to traverse between uh, the parenchyma, the, the matter of the brain, and, and the uh, dura. Uh, this shows you in, in the skull, there's a skull and the dura is attached right to the skull. There's no, there's no separation. Now, if we get, and, and then you come down and you see there's a subarachnoid space that uh, contains CSF that, that uh, contains this, that provides a sac of, of fluid that surrounds the brain. And so within the cranium, there are both actual spaces, such as the subarachnoid space, and there are potential spaces, such as the space between the skull and the dura. And what we're going to do now is look at what happens if there's a bleed into each of these uh, four different spaces. So this is the normal situation. There's the skin, the skull, the dura mater, the arachnoid with the subarachnoid space, and then the parenchyma. We're going to look at four different places where there can be a bleed. The first one is between the skull and the dura. This is called an epidural bleed or an epidural hematoma. This is caused typically by trauma. It is extremely uh, dangerous. It has to be treated. This can be a, a large amount of, of a large increase in intracranial pressure very quickly for reasons that are a little unclear to me or very unclear to me. Uh, sometimes people with an epidural hematoma have what's called a lucid interval where everything is fine and then all of a sudden they, they, go, they become unconscious and um, by that time it's typically too late to save them. So these epidural bleeds are, uh, are absolutely uh, a medical emergency. These are, these are potentially lethal. This is a bleed into a space that shouldn't exist. There should be no space between the skull and the dura. Okay. Another place where there's, there can be a bleed is between the dura and the arachnoid. And this is called a subdural bleed. And now, in contrast to here, where there's a lot of pressure, uh, there, there's a lot of pressure. This is a pretty low pressure space because you can just indent into the subarachnoid space. And so these bleeds typically fan out over, uh, over an area and they do not always become symptomatic. And, and there, are, uh, there can be asymptomatic subdural bleeds that just exist for a long time and never become symptomatic. And, or they may build slowly. Now, there are a few people, few individuals uh, who are susceptible to these subdural bleeds. So one, uh, re one uh, group of people that are susceptible to the subdural bleeds are people who have had a back and forth motion to their head. And the reason is because there are, there are um, bridging veins that cross this divide that can break open when there's this kind of a motion. And these bridging, breaking open of these bridging veins can lead to a, a, a hemorrhage into the subdural space. So who, what, when does this occur? It occurs with a whiplash injury, and it also has um, been associated with shaken baby. So this is, these are essentially babies that are uh, either killed or attempted to kill. So the, the, there's a shaking of the baby back and forth. And it cut and it and it breaks these bridging veins. They bleed into the um, subdural uh, space, and this can ultimately kill the kill the child. The other people that are susceptible to these bleeds are older people with a cortical atrophy. So think about the fact that normally you have a nice plump cerebral hemisphere. But if there is a loss of, of cortical matter, which does occur with, in, uh, with age, tends to occur with age, there might be a shrinking of the, of the cerebrum. And now these bridging veins are stretched. They're stretched taut and thin, and they're, it's much easier to break them. And so elderly people also get these bleeds. Not always symptomatic, but can be symptomatic. All right.
The next type of bleed are bleeds that come, that uh, bleed into the subarachnoid space. Subarachnoid space should be filled with CSF. When it gets filled with uh, blood, this is, um, this, there's, this is essentially a medical emergency. This is a medical emergency. Um, it is also a, it is described as the worst headache of one's life. So why is that? Because blood has what's called algesic chemicals. These are chemicals such as um, bradykinin um, and, and uh, just a high concentration of potassium, serotonin. These are chemicals that will cause frank pain. And so when these, when these um, uh, get into this area, it's not that the brain is receiving the pain, it's the meninges have receptors that are sensitive to these noxious chemicals, these algesic chemicals, and they signal um, a, an excruciating headache. So a subarachnoid hemorrhage can often occur in response to trauma, and the, uh, the treatment is going to be a relieving of, of pressure. Besides trauma, another reason why subarachnoid hemorrhage can occur is if there's an ar arteriovenous malformation, an AVM, that, that manages to bleed into this space. So that's another reason why you might get this. Sometimes there are pre-bleeds, little, little bleeds that cause a headache, not the worst headache of the life, but a, a bad headache. And, um, and these can be uh, the, the, the sign that a, a full-blown he subarachnoid hemorrhage is about to occur. Uh, these should be taken seriously. Uh, and um, and, and it's, it's important to remember that not every patient is average. So the average patient is going to have the worst headache of their lives but not every patient is gonna present in exactly that same way. And we have to be on guard that a, a person complaining of a very unusual, very acute, bad headache, um, this is something that needs to be ruled out. And finally, there can be a, a, a bleed into the parenchyma. And this is a, 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 uh, this is a hemorrhagic stroke. We saw a picture of uh, just, just before. A hemorrhagic stroke has two uh, big problems. One is that it kills the cells where the where the where the damage is centered, where the damage is centered. But also, in the penumbra, um, tissue that is exposed to blood has a reaction that's called vasospasm. And what that does is that when upon being exposed to blood the cerebral vessels just close off. And now you've got this, if they're closed off, you're not gonna get any oxygen. So now you have this ischemic response, this response that produces ischemia to a hemorrhagic stroke. So you're, you're adding insult to injury. So this is a, um, uh, something that really has to be addressed. And, and, and ways of addressing vasospasm are an area of active, active research. So in the next uh, section, we're gonna talk about head trauma.